Guard Saturday, okay. uh, 5 p.m. Pacific time, uh, 8 p.m. Eastern time. Um, I believe if you have access, you can watch this for free. I've been told that. I have not confirmed that. Um, and I'm sure New Japan World, you'll get everything. I'm a New Japan World subscriber. I know you are. Yeah. So we can we can watch it whenever we want. Um, the first match, and it's basically booked typical New Japan. Uh, I guess the look is supposed to be like New Japan. They're basically bringing the New Japan show to the U.S. So this is not going to be like New Japan ring of honor production this is going to be new japan new japan production on u.s soil so that's something different i think it might be pretty cool especially if you haven't seen it before um but the first match uh as we all know new japan breaks it down first match 20 minute time limit uh beretta rocky marrero will osprey mark briscoe jay briscoe versus the bucks marty scroll usual takahashi bad luck fale so basically uh you know, a bunch of guys versus the Bullet Club to open the show. Um, no big surprise there. I mean, you're in California, Young Bucks. The crowd will be hot for the Bullet Club there, I would think. The uh, the second match, another 20-minute time limit here, is a four. It's a four on four. And again, for any of you people who don't understand New Japan, this is kind of how they open their shows. Yeah. Uh, so it's typical. Very, it's it's very typical New Japan booking. Uh, you have Titan, you have Dragon Lee. Uh, Ring of Honor fans will know Dragon Lee is a tremendous competitor. Yep. Uh, Valador Jr. and Jushin Thunder Liger versus Hiromu Takahashi. U.S. fans might know him as Kamatachi. Bushi, Evil, and Sonata, the uh, Los... Uh, how do you say Are you going to make me say it? <laughs> yeah, go with that. That was close. That go go. That was back. close. I got close with it. <laughs> so basically, again, a faction versus the band of brothers here, mm-hmm. and that's that's kind of how again how New Japan books shows. Interesting match here, considering what we saw Ring of Honor pay per view this weekend. Uh, IWGP U.S. Heavyweight Title Match Tournament Quarterfinal. So you're now you're getting to the quarterfinals for the. Uh, for the U.S. heavyweight title, uh, Lethal versus Hangman Page. Now, Lethal uh, wrestled uh, 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 Silas Young at the Ring of Honor pay per view. Okay, a beat down pretty badly after the match. Uh, slammed on the uh, beer keg. Uh, Silas held him in the corner with the. You know, with his ribs on the beer keg, why uh, Bruiser splashed on him four or five times. And then they put him through a table on the outside, Bruiser off the top ropes. And during the broadcast, because I just happened to watch it today because I was there live, um, they said, you know, and this is wrestling, mm. uh, Lethal was being seen at, a, you know, a low hospital for broken ribs. And. Not to give you too many spoilers, but this storyline played out during the TV taping for Ring of Honor with Lethal not being able to appear. Hmm. So do we get do we get a change of opponent for Hangman Page? Or do they say that's a Ring of Honor storyline, this is New Japan? Hmm. I would think Lethal I would think Lethal would want to be involved in this tournament, but it kind of trashes the Ring of Honor storyline. Oh, that's a tough one. It totally does. So that's, that, I find that interesting. I so, do, either way... I, go ahead. I, I do remember uh, Tanahashi, the one year, got an injury. Yeah. I think it was during the G1, and he they ended up forfeiting him, if you remember that, all his matches. So, would Bullet, Bullet, Club, would Bullet Club member Hangman Page get a pass? He may. Mm, that would be interesting. Hmm. So that'll be interesting. That is that is the third match. Um, the fourth match is also a uh, quarterfinal in the uh, U.S. Heavyweight Title uh, Tournament quarterfinal. Uh, and I mean, Juice Robertson. I mean, you guys. Again, we've said it a thousand times on Cool Truth for Cool Truth fans. Uh, C.J. Parker. 
uh, who is who's you know one of one of the guys New Japan has really uh, been pushing for a while now. Yep. Uh, he kind of kind of slingshotted through the New Japan deal there for a while, and um, he, him versus Jack Saber Jr. Very interesting matchup there. I I mean I kind of feel like it could go either way. I don't necessarily see Jack Saber Jr. and a heavyweight you know a U.S. heavyweight title picture. Mm, yeah, uh, you know. He seems more like a super junior to me, or I mean, that just to me. But I'm guessing out in LA that Jack Saber Junior probably has a pretty good following, and that's probably why he's in it. But strange, that's a strange pairing for me there. Yeah, I agree. But yeah, you just said it right there. It's probably the New Japan Juice would win. Oh yeah, totally. Yep. Okay, so I mean, I think we're on the same page I'm there. With you on there, yeah. And then they kind of give you a break from the tournament, and there's a uh, this match is a thirty limit, thirty minute time limit. Another one of these four on fours. Um, David Finley, Jay White, Kushida, and Hiroshi Tanahashi mm. versus Sho Tanaka. You're gonna have to bear with me on some of these names. Yo Yoi Kamatsu. Yoshi Tatsu, again, name everyone should know, and uh, badass Billy Gunn. That's so interesting. That's, a, that's an interesting pairing there. Yeah. Well, listen, aren't they like the anti Bullet Club guys? And yeah. So yeah. Little while. like Billy Gunn and Yoshi Tatsu are the anti Bullet Club guys, so maybe that's why they're paired together. Right. So that again, this is a New Japan type pairing. Where U.S. wrestling might not make sense to you, mm -hmm. and you get Tanahashi, so that's pretty cool. You know, you're, it's not often you get Tanahashi on U.S. soil, so Hell that's yeah. a big one. Hell yeah! Do you think at this point the American crowd will be enjoying it? Uh, I think if you get your atypical New Japan booking, I would mm -hmm. say yes. Okay, all right, I agree. Because I, I think they find a way to make these matches exciting, mm -hmm. and I think I think you're going to get a lot of Ring of Honor crossover fan, a lot of uh, maybe a lot of PWG type fan out there. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, I th I think they're going to like it. I just I just don't you know I, I as as far as the New Japan style show is the the fan reaction is going to be very different than what you're used to when you're watching New Japan World, I would think. I would think so, too. Yeah, I'm actually interested that is, to see that. That's, that's a very interesting aspect. There's, there's a lot of intricacies with them running here. That will be... I I, I read that they banned uh, streamers because of how how much, you know, you go to Ring of Honor show to stream every fucking match. Oh, yeah, yeah. That would, so that would be that a they, mess. Yeah, I read that they banned streamers and... Uh, you know, it just, I, I, I mean, I'm sure all the guys who worked Ring of Honor know what to expect, but there's probably some, you know, they're probably, the way these matches are booked, they're going to be New Japan style with a very different crowd reaction. Yep. I mean, we talked about it before, New Japan crowd is like, clap for what they like. You know, you kind of get, when somebody does something funny, you kind of get that universal, like, ha, 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 ha. Yeah. You know, you know what yeah, I mean? yeah, yeah. Like, you're not, a, a U.S. crowd, you're not going to, they're going to be chanting and saying things and you know i just hope that the crowd is you know uh respectful to what they're watching right yeah you know what i mean like i hope there's not a lot of like usa chants and things like that like you know because I, I just don't think that fits what you're watching right now i don't know we'll see yeah i hope it doesn't get out of control and it's it'll be very interesting to uh to watch and it, you know what crowd reaction may play into whether they do it again or not. You never know. That's true. That's true. You know, um, it's not like they're selling it on pay per view. Mm -hmm. Um, I mean, I'm sure if they see a pop in you know New Japan World sales, they would. That might be something that would bring them back. But I mean, they sold out in two hours, both shows. So people are excited about it. I would say. I think I think it'll be a. Success. Don't know how big the arenas are. They're they're running. Mm -hmm. uh, but they sold out rapidly. I mean, that's pretty good. Uh, the six match, sixty minute time minute, IWGP tag team titles. Uh, the Gorillas of Destiny, Tanga Roa and Tamatanga, 
versus War Machine, Hanson, and Rowe. Um, I mean, guys got chemistry together already. They face each other a lot. Uh, I, I I would think you'd have a pretty damn good you know uh, tag team title match there. Yeah, this match is going to kick ass. <laughs> That's a strong style guy's fucking wet dream. Oh yeah, yeah. Forget about it. You know, and um, I I think it'll be pretty good. Uh, again, still sticking with the uh, the break from the um, the U.S. Heavyweight Title Tournament here. Um, actually, no, we're we're back into it. So the seventh match is it's a no limit, it's a no time limit, and it, it is part of the U.S. Heavyweight Title Match Tournament quarterfinal. Uh, Tamario Ishii versus Tatsuya Naito mm. from Los Ingobernables State, Japan. Mm. That is an awesome match. Yeah, they're gonna love that one. <laughs> um, with New Japan, you never know. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm a Naito guy, so I'm gonna go with Naito. But I, I, you could see Ishii winning as well. I could see both. And I, yep. I think you're gonna get a sick match there. Yep, I agree, and I think uh, I'm I, I'm gonna go with you here too, Naito. And you know, you know, in part part of it might be. You know, with Naito, no, you know, doing more, more of the uh, Ring of Honor stuff this year, mm -hmm. might be more known to the U.S. fan. That's true. That's a good point. And you're in, you're in, um, you're in California. Maybe a little Mexican aspect there too. Mm, yes. So that, I mean, to me, that's just tremendous booking. Um, I, I you didn't know, even think of that. So we you know, yeah, it's it's a factor. I would think. Mm -hmm. uh, eighth match this is again a uh, quarterfinal and this is the big one uh, in the US anyway Big Mike Michael Elgin versus Kenny Omega mm. and his match and I'd be shocked if Omega didn't win agreed <laughs> I mean if, if anything here Omega's gotta be I, you know odds on he, he may not win it but he's your odds on favorite to win it I would think yeah. if you're betting so I would, uh, you know, I would go. I, I would expect to see a very good match and Omega win. And that is actually not the main event of the show, which it easily could be. The main event, sixty-minute time limit, IWGP Heavyweight Title match. The Rainmaker Kazuchika Okada again. He fight every now and then in the U.S., but not that often. Mm -hmm. You get Okada versus the uh, American Nightmare Cody. The uh, newly crowned Ring of Honor champion as the challenger. I would think you're going to get a tremendous main event here. It's going to be tremendous. I'm just wondering how this finish goes. Uh, I, mm. I it's got to go Okada. Does it go Okada? Does it go Okada because of Omega? Mm. Are they going to? Here, here's my thoughts. Okay. I think it's far too soon to split up what the Bullet Club has going. And I don't think you'll see Cody win because of that. And I don't think you'll see Omega get involved because of that. Okay. Does that make any sense? It does make sense. And I kind of hope you're right. But I just think it's far too soon to break up this, what, what they have going with, you know, kind of like the Ring of Honor faction being... Cody, Hangman Page, Marty Scroll, and and the Bucks, mm -hmm. and then you add in the New Japan guys, which would be Omega, Takahashi, Bad Luck, and Girls of Destiny, and of course, you know, you could intertwine at any point, but you've got basically those what what is that ten guys or whatever? Yep, that's that's the Bullet Club. That that's what it is. I know that Omega, you know, Cody's more of a crossover to New Japan than Omega is. To Ring of Honor, but I just think it's too soon to break that up. I hope you're right. I agree, it is too soon. But I've well, here's the thing. I have a gut feeling, man, that they're going to do something here. Here, here's the thing. Now I'm saying that as a Ring of Honor fan. Okay. As a New Japan person, though, what do they care? That's to true. me, <laughs> to me breaking that up hurts Ring of Honor more than it hurts New Japan. Mm. Because what my thing is, they're not breaking up 
the elite Omega and the Bucks. Mm -hmm. So unless Omega and the Bucks are completely splitting away and Cody's taking over the Bullet Club, um, Cody would be the odd man out. Which, for New Japan, that wouldn't necessarily be a bad thing for them. But to me, it's crushing the Ring of Honor right now. Hmm. There's a lot of ways you could think about this. And I'm, I'm not sure which way they're going to go. Maybe, maybe they're going to do nothing. I think they're going to do nothing. Okay, here's a question. I think you're going to get a very good match. I think you're going to get the New Japan style match. I think you're going to get Bullet Club involvement. But I also think you're going to get Okada with a clean win. Let me throw this at you. If they would decide to have maybe Kenny come out and throw in the towel on Cody, just like they booked the other match, right? Mm Mm-hmm. Would the crowd get it? That's a good question. I would think in this wrestling world that 75% of the crowd would, okay, and the other 25% would follow suit. (laughs) It's a good way to put it. (laughs) <laughs> well, because you, know, you think, know the other 25 would. Well, I just think crowds kind of it's follow the leader with right. crowds. Yes. Yeah. I hope Okada retains. What 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 I'm what with what you're asking is if it does happen do I think it would be over people's heads? No. I don't I you know what I'm saying like I think they would know where they're going with that. Okay. I don't know if you agree or not, but that's what I think. <laughs> I, I think I, most. I mean, if if you want a sample section of people that are watching that online in America, you would think that a lot of them would be at that show. Here, here's what I'm thinking. I'm thinking this is going to be more of Cody Ring of Honor champion, Omega US IWGP US champion, and I think there's going to be an in competition between them. For who's going to be the one to take out Okada. But I think ultimately. Uh, if they were. Or if they are going to put it on the. Uh, the non-Japanese guy. Right. So to speak at, at Wrestle Kingdom or wherever. Uh, I would think. New Japan would be more apt to put it on Omega. Yeah you're probably right. And you know what if they were going to. I just think even though in the U.S. You could make the case that Cody would be the bigger name. Internationally, I'm not so sure that's the case. Even if they were going to try and tell that story of a Bullet Club split, you might not even need the belt anyway. You know what right. I mean? Like, so that's a good point too. You could you could be I'm the guy who's going to take it off. Right. Okada. I'm the guy. You I you lost to Okada. Well, you lost to Okada. Right. You right. know you know what I'm saying? Like, yep, yep. You, there's a lot there's a lot of ways you could go with that. Or they could just agree to be whoever does it when it happens does it right. I, I don't know right i here's here's the thing i just don't know if the first night of a g1 special in la is a big enough spot that new japan's gonna remove their champion because to me if if you look at it this way yes the u.s is involved Yes, I, I'm sure a lot of U.S. fans that maybe never watched New Japan might watch it because it's here. But are, their fan base, are they watching? I don't know that they are. That's a great point, too. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. they might be sleeping at the time. You, you, or, you, I mean, I don't even, you know, that might be a stupid comment. I don't know how the, uh, the what you call it, breaks down, the time change. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I'd have to figure out the time change broke down, but you know they might be it might be like in the middle of the day for them. I don't, I don't even know, but whatever the case may be, are they watching? Are they are they in, invested enough that New Japan would change their champion at that point? Yeah, that's the other thing too. They're just they... and to me, if you were going to change your champion, you'd do it on day two, and you wouldn't have created a new title for this weekend. Right, right, and also you're debuting in America, so well, not debuting, but you know what I mean, uh, right. You probably don't want to break up the Bullet Club anyway on the first day. You know what I mean? I really, I, I don't, I don't think you want to do it. I mean, if Ring of Honor has any influence, I'm, I'm sure they'd be dead set against it. 
right. given what I saw, given what I saw this weekend, mm-hmm. they they would have to be because that crowd was insane for Cody, right. insane. Right. And part of it is the two sweet chants and the Bullet Club being in there and Marty Scroll coming out and helping them and everything else. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So. I, I think it was, I think it was uh, proper for Ring of Honor to put the title on him before he goes into this match because you want him, you want him strong heading into this match strong. But I don't think it hurts what Cody's doing to lose to Kazuchika Okada in a New Japan IWGP title match. I mean, right? You know, for all intents and purposes, the real champion of the world is Kazuchika Okada. You, you, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I think a lot of people view it that way. Well, let, let, me, let me switch gears on you here for a second. Sure. Jeff Edwards here for the rest of this show. To listen to this show in its entirety, please visit Apple Podcasts, Spreaker.com. Search 1650-1650, 1650-PWAM. Your new home for pro wrestling and more.